Okay, we will start the session shortly. Uh, before we start, please be reminded that there is a recording and a live live stream to our Radin Mass constituency Facebook. So please do not review any personal and private details. And also please mute your mics while the nurses, nurses are presenting. Only unmute when you need to do any sharing. The nurses, CEO can start. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Suhaila. I'm from SGH Community Nursing. So today our topic is on is on uh, dementia. Yeah. Hold on, I share screen. Okay, so uh, today our topic is on dementia. So we're going to talk about what is dementia. Can you hear? Can. Can hear. Okay, so today we're going to talk about what is dementia, the common types of dementia, the stages of dementia, risk factors of dementia, how is dementia diagnosed, um, how we can prevent the risk of dementia, and how we can assist a person with dementia. So, and also some strategies to tackle dementia in Singapore. Okay, so what is dementia? It's actually a disorder that affects the brain. It affects the thinking, the behavior, and the ability to perform everyday tasks. So the affected individual is not able to have a normal work or social life. So it's very common in older people, more than 65 years old. However, right, it's not a normal aging process. Uh, it can also affect people in their 40s or 50s. Uh, but um, usually dementia is not inherited, but some like Alzheimer's disease is an hereditary disease. Okay, so today there are about 28,000 people aged 60 years and above with dementia. By 2030, there will be about over 130,000 persons with dementia. In a recent well-being of uh, Singapore elderly nationwide study, they, they showed that the prevalence of dementia was found to be 10% in the elderly population aged 60 years and above. Okay, so there, there are many types of dementia, but the common types of dementia is the Alzheimer's disease, which is 60 to 80% in the most, which is the most common type of dementia. And it's also a progressive condition where the symptoms gradually worsen over years. So another type is the vascular dementia, which is related to stroke and is also known as a post-stroke dementia. But it doesn't mean that if you have stroke, you will have this vascular dementia. Lah. It doesn't mean that. Yeah, so the diagram shows you uh, on the left side is the healthy brain and on the right side is the dementia. Oh, there is no sound. Where the brain shrinks. Yeah, so there are three types of dementia. One is at stage one, you have forgetfulness, uh, able to remember old memories better than the new memories. Oh, there is no sound. 
can hear uh, can hear me uh, uh yes we can uh daisy do you manage to on your volume so i continue okay so three stages of dementia stage one usually the person will be forgetful able to remember all memories better than the new memories and have difficulty planning or organizing stage two there is obvious memory lapse and confusion and stage three you are uh, usually unable to recognize family members unable to care for themselves and need assistance in daily activities okay so how to differentiate between normal and abnormal signs okay for a normal person right you'll forget someone name but but later on you will remember but what is abnormal is when you often forget things and then after that you also cannot remember them later so another example will be a busy person will, when get distracted, they may forget to serve a dish left on the stove, but only remember to serve when the meal is over. What, what is, uh, that one is normal. Uh, so sometimes we cook, right? Then after that, we forget to serve, put the dish on the table, like left in the microwave. But what is abnormal, right, is when you not only forget to serve the meal, but you also forget that you have really made it. Yeah. Another one is when you when speaking, having trouble finding the right words. Okay, what is abnormal is not only you forget simple words, but you also use words wrongly. Um, another example will be for a moment, forget the day of the week or your or your destination where you want to go. So what is abnormal is when you get lost on your own street and not knowing where they are and how they get there or how to go back home. Okay, so for memory, concentration and judgment, usually they remain intact. So the one that is abnormal is when you, you have poor memory, you cannot concentrate, and you have poor judgment. Yeah, and number six, although difficult, still able to do calculation. So abnormal is when you are not able to do simple calculation, lost their meaning, has do not know what to do with them. Yeah, so sometimes people misplace our wallet and keys, right? But what is abnormal is when you repeatedly putting things in the wrong places. Then normal is when you have feeling of sad and moody from time to time. Abnormal is when you have rapid extreme mood swings from calm to tears for no apparent reason. Okay, so for some, uh, for us normally we have personally changed with changes when we age. For abnormal is when there's a complete change in personality as compared to the past. Another example would be like, uh, it's normal to feel tired of housework, job, or social obligation at times. So what is abnormal is when you become very passive, when yeah, when you need to yeah, you need prompting to become involved or to do something. So how do you know whether how do I know whether I have dementia? So early signs tend to be very subtle and vague. So there's progressive and frequent memory loss, particularly remembering recent events. There's confusion, uh, sometimes personality change, lack of emo uh, feelings, emotions, socially isolated and unable to perform daily tasks. As other conditions such as strokes, alcoholism, depression, infection, brain tumor, drug-related interaction and toxicity, as well as vitamin or hormone deficiency can produce similar dementia-like symptoms. Thus, it's very important to see a doctor to confirm diagnosis and do not jump to conclusions. So what are the risk factors for dementia? Uh, people with high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol, excessive alcohol consumption, smoking, diabetes, uh, those with midlife obesity, lack of mental stimulation, lack of physical activity, and those with depression, loneliness, and social isolation. So what should you do if your loved ones have dementia? You suspect that your loved one have dementia. So you need to consult a doctor as soon as possible to obtain an accurate diagnosis as dementia has no cure. There are only medications to help to delay its effects. So what should you do to make your loved ones agreeable to visit the doctor? So usually the person who has dementia will not say they have dementia, lah, then they won't want to see the doctor. So you must know what physical ailment your loved ones are most concerned about and offer to have it checked with a doctor. Or maybe you can suggest to rule out hypertension or diabetes lah, so that um, they agree to see the doctor. 
or sometimes uh, you can say that you want to review his long-term medication or suggest that both you and him or her to have a physical checkup together. Okay, so how does a doctor diagnose dementia? So they will get medical, a uh, detailed medical history from close relative or the friend or friend. Uh, they will do a thorough physical and neurological examination that tests the senses and movement to identify the cause. Then they, uh, they will also do blood tests, urine tests, known as the dementia screen to rule out any possible illness. Then uh, there is a neuropsychological test that identify the specific problem areas pertaining to the comprehension, insight, and judgment. Now, this one is usually for the staging also. Other specialized tests such as chest x-ray, ECG, and CT scans. Mental tests, status tests to, to check which intellectual functions are being affected, such as memory, ability to read, write, and calculate. For example, the AMT and the MMSE. There will also be a psychiatric evaluation throughout depression, anxiety, delusion, or other neurological disorders. Okay, so how you can prevent the risk of dementia? So adequate sleep, uh, encourage to exercise at about 30 minutes a day, five times a week, uh, exercise with music. Um, if, if smoking can try to stop smoking, decrease or stop alcohol consumption, um, good control of your chronic diseases such as hypertension, diabetes, and high cholesterol through medication compliance and healthy eating. Uh, continuous lifelong learning. Play games that promote problem solving and calculations. Uh, and increase social interaction to elevate the mood. Okay, so what if you see someone outside who you think uh, has dementia and is lost? Lah? So uh, you look out for the following behavior signs of disorientation. And does the, the appear does the person appear lost? Okay, so then you will uh, approach the person and then try to talk to the person. So when you talk to the person, you speak softly and slowly to them, ask one question at a time, and be patient when waiting for a response. Then you jot their memory by giving them the names of nearby landmarks or the name of the locations. So you can offer also offer help to bring them to a place to sit and rest. Uh, offer a drink or some simple food and guide them to check if they have found they have some form of identification or if they can recall their home telephone numbers. Yeah, if needed, you can dial for help, alert security if found lost in buildings, or call the police at the last resort. Take note not to tell the elderly that you are doing so. Lah. So if not, they will get uh, very scared. Yeah. And then continue to chat with them to provide reassurance until help arrives. Okay, so strategies are that available in Singapore. Lah. So we uh, they have the Alzheimer's. Uh, Singapore is like dementia friendly. So they have Alzheimer's disease, AIC, which have uh, a lot of uh, um, information on dementia. Then there's this dem dementia GPS tracker which can be bought online. Yeah, so that if the person gets lost, you can track where is the person. Uh, there's a launch on ebook on people with dementia. So this ebook, they talk about uh, the, the, a lot more information lah on dementia. And then nowadays, um, there's a lot of communities that are dementia friendly. They, they will have this sticker, we are dementia friendly. So actually, if you find any, any persons with dementia, you can actually send them to these uh, uh, places. Lah. So there are some in Yishun, McPherson, Hong Kan North, Bedok, Queenstown, Bukit Batok, Woodlands, Fengshan, and many other uh, communities lah in Singapore. Okay, so another important thing is the advanced care planning. Lah. It's good that uh, we do our advanced care planning early so that just uh, if anything happen in future, we actually um, know what we want. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Yes, thank you. Can I ask a question? 
What is the yeah? What is the possibility cause of dementia? So dementia can be for some people like vascular dementia, uh, because of post stroke. Yeah, or they have high high cholesterol, then the blood vessels in the the brain become um like thin uh smaller can also cause all this dementia. Yeah, Maybe. in the long term. In the long term, uh, someone told me that, someone mentioned that her husband has dementia and uh, the, <clears throat> one of the reasons why he has dementia is because she always cooked with aluminum foil. She, she used, so using aluminum, <laughs> the way that we bake uh, the aluminum foil will cause dementia. Uh, I, I don't, don't think so, is there like, you can say that it's aluminum foil fault that will cause the dementia. Yeah, you must look into other things. Like, does he have other chronic disease like diabetes or you know hypertension, which is already causing you know long term, long term lah, which which will cause in the long term dementia. Yeah. Mm. So I can't say uh, aluminum foil causes dementia. <laughs> then, uh, uh, let me yeah. think. Uh, mm, okay. Uh, Excuse me. Do you need to book doctor uh, at polyclinic to see dementia, or you go direct to the hospital? So usually, right, we will uh, refer to polyclinic so that they can do the referral to specialist. Mm. Yeah. But that means you have to wait very long time, yeah. <laughs> no la. Hi, my, my name is Nasri. Usually, why do we uh, encourage to go polyclinic? Because uh, from polyclinic, the doctor will refer to specialist and then you can get a uh, uh, subsidy rate. If you go through specialist straight away to call the hospital hotline, they will book you as a private rate. So we usually we will encourage to go to the polyclinic first. The doctor will do an assessment yeah. to check whether uh, do you have signs and symptoms of dementia. They will do a few assessment. So they feel that there is a need to be referred to a specialist, then they will book an appointment. But appointment oh, time is also depends on the hospital also. They ask whether uh, is the waiting time long, or is it short? Yes. May I ask, dementia can be recovered? So dementia got no cure. Ah, no so, cure. Ah, yo. Yeah. So, yeah. but then they take medicine to help, you know, prevent the, to be very fast, the deterioration. Oh, condition. Yeah. Oh. So, so usually it's the old people who can dementia. <laughs> May I know, uh, not enough sleep, think too much. Okay, you mentioned. <laughs> so, so again, la, like, like I say, um, the risk is there, la, not enough sleep, loneliness. But then again, it's not just those are the main cause. So you have to look at other causes also that can, you know, add together that cause this dementia to happen. Yeah, it's a long-term uh slowly progressing disease la. so it won't like just because you're you feel like you don't have enough sleep you will have dementia it's not like that so you always have to if you feel like you know your memory is not very good nowadays right it's always good to just check with a doctor yep so they can do further tests so it's just not because of the sign and symptom ah. like very vague yeah, so you need to really go to see a doctor where they can do blood tests, urine tests, they do the scan to confirm whether you are diagnosed with dementia. Thanks. Hello, may I ask you, do they have a feeling uh, and emotion? Uh? Yeah, they, they will have feelings and emotion. So... What, what, how, how will you 
Yeah, you want to express for them? Sometimes um, they are unable to express their emotion. For example, some dementia, they have their words, but they cannot express it. So sometimes they can we get very frustrated and very mm. agitated. So that's why there are a few ways now we are healthy. We have to keep ourselves relaxed and do things have a hobby, for example, do whatever you like to do. For example, if you like to go for a stroll in the morning, uh, read newspaper, read books, that we can stimulate our mind so that we won't be very stagnant. Yes, especially um, just sleep, watch TV, no exercise. So this one can slow down our progress of our mind. Mm. Which engage in a health talk okay, is also good. You. That means you keep yourself updated, know what is surrounding, so you think, uh, so you, uh, you know what is uh, the latest update of the current condition or, or the disease that is around. You are talking about okay. those people already have the, you, you are talking about people who already have this dementia on the Palema state, is it? Palema case. That they, they, they all will provide uh, something like, uh, I, I don't mean causes, uh, I mean you all will like so-called, uh, those people have starting beginner, beginner dimension. So uh, <clears throat> uh, is, is it advisable that for those people, just get, get, just get it very mild dimension that they should go for something like not really causes like training or to, to slow down the, the getting worse, to slow down their, yeah. So there are also actually family members place apart. So the oh. family members, what they can do, they can learn what is dementia and how to cope with caregiver or family members with dementia. So this will help the family members to slow down the progress from a big from a beginner dementia to a late stage of dementia. So this it's very important how our family members can play a part because the family members are the one that always with the dementia okay. patient. Yeah, thanks. So uh, in order to prevent, we should live a private lifestyle. Private, I mean, uh, private. Private means a very active lifestyle to prevent from getting this. <laughs> yes. How to uh, prevent? How to prevent? How to prevent? So, prevent. To, hey, they say play mahjong. Yes, play mahjong is good. You simulate your brain. You keep on oh. thinking. Yeah. Oh. So read newspaper. Some of them, they play um, Ramyo and they, they play know. the Sudoku. Sudoku, so the, the number game, you think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do something which can stimulate your brain. Read books, yeah. read newspaper. Yes. Yeah, right. But now because of COVID condition, uh, a lot of seniors cannot cannot go <laughs> go yeah, for this activity correct. so sad. Yeah. Correct. so they can do that under other alternative they can do at home they can uh, join via zoom do exercise at home do uh, do some activity so what uh, see sometimes see what is the uh, community center uh, they have activities so it's best that zoom. we can join that's why now we join you all. Uh. You have yes, a lot. Yes, thank this, you. Uh, yeah, last yeah. time we, but, then, but we were love to see uh, face to face. Uh, but yeah, now, but then, uh, yeah, very different, you know. Do in the Zoom, uh, no motivation. Yeah, you definitely. Know. But now also, I cannot see your face, Miss Christine. So if I can see your face, then it will be very, very <laughs> be better. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. Yes, welcome. Any more questions? Yeah, it's um, important to, re to remain active. La. Remain mind. Right. Yes, definitely. Body, everything active. Right. Then, you know, right. now we can't, we can't meet each other, but can at least still talk over the phone. Yes, that's why it's important. Uh, so that yeah, we feel then good. Then we have video call. Actually, very thankful to have the this kind of high tech. Oh, we virtual or this. If otherwise, it would be worse. <laughs> yeah, so luckily COVID is not like 20 or maybe 50 years ago. There's 
no technology not so advanced as now so we are grateful that with this situation we still can meet via um, zoom and also via telephone and also there's a lot of activity that we can do uh, so if uh, there there were a uh, family member uh, in the earlier generation uh, so is it that the uh, the 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 family were uh, likely to have the disease. So you mean like hereditary uh, passed down, is it? Ah, uh, yes, right. Yeah. So like I say, no. Usually dementia is not hereditary. Yeah. Unless, uh, like they say just now, uh, Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. Maybe Alzheimer's disease. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, sorry, uh, I just mistook the time. I just tuned in at 2.30, it's over. Can you show the slides uh, so that I can see myself? Uh, there will be a recording that will be left on the Radin Mask constituency Facebook, so you can watch that later after the session ends. Oh, okay. So it won't be in the chat box for me to see. Uh? I, will, I will put the link in the chat. I'll uh, put the link in the chat. Okay, but I don't mind if, if you if they have the time, just show it on the screen and uh, all the, the PowerPoints can. Okay. Hi, well, uh, Nurse Ohala run through these slides, a uh, quick slides again. Uh, the team may, uh, the rest of you actually, uh, Gary from Radimas has, uh, actually put the link on the chat box. So you can actually save the link so that you can actually watch the, uh, recorded sessions later on or in future, should you wish to actually, uh, look back at the recording sessions and go through again, you can actually, uh, take a look via the Facebook. So it's saved there. And like uh, our, all our previous health talk that uh, we have collaborated with Radima CC is actually up on their Facebook page also. Hmm. So meanwhile, uh, while uh, Sohala run through the sites quickly, you all can actually uh, think, uh, have a quick look through and to see if there's any more questions that you, you wish to ask the nurse that you can catch her. And more Mr. Nashri and time, their time. Thank yeah. you. So we discussed what dementia, common types of dementia, stages of dementia, risk factors, how is dementia diagnosed, how, uh, how to prevent the risk of dementia, uh, how to assist if you find a person with dementia in the community, and strategies to tackle dementia in Singapore. So this is what dementia. So it's not a normal aging process. Usually more common in elderly, uh, 65 years and above. But it can also affect people in their 40s and 50s. So Alzheimer's disease is an her hereditary disease, but uh, the rest is usually not inherited. Lah. So today about 28,000, 60 years and above have dementia. They predicted that about in 2030, there will be 130,000 people with dementia. So this uh, nationwide study showed that the prevalence of dementia is found to be 10% in the elderly population above 60 years. So these are the two types of uh, dementia. Dementia then the three stages of dementia so stage one you have forgetfulness able to remember old memories better than the new memories you have some difficulty planning and organizing and stage two is there's an obvious memory lapse and there's some confusion next stage is stage three you will not be able to recognize family members able to care for yourself and need assistance in your daily activities here are some example of what is a normal behavior and what is abnormal signs lah.
Okay, so how do you know whether you have dementia? So usually the sign is very subtle and vague. Yeah, so in order, there's other condition that can like stroke, alcoholism, depression, all these condition that can show like you might have dementia like symptom. But uh, it's always important to see a doctor to confirm diagnosis. Lah. Don't just jump to conclusion. So these are the risk factors. So how do I, what should I do if I suspect my loved ones have dementia? So see a doctor immediately. Uh, dementia has no cure, so medications can help to delay its effects. Uh, what should I do if to make my loved ones agreeable to visit the doctor? So you can um, know what physical element your loved ones are most concerned about and offer it to be checked by a doctor. But sometimes you can just say, oh, you want to just make sure it's not hypertension or diabetes so that they won't be too worried. Lah. Or you just say maybe you can want to check on their long-term medication. Or you offer to do a physical checkup for yourself and for your loved ones. Lah. So how is dementia diagnosed? So it's not just by listening to the, the, side, the, the whatever symptoms the signs that you are having. Lah. So detailed medical history will be taken. Then there will be physical neurological examination that tests the senses, movements to identify the cause. Blood test, urine test. Uh, there's a neuropsychological test. Uh, chest x-ray, ECG, CT scan. Yeah, they can do mental test check to check your memory, ability to read, write and calculate. And then there will also be a psychiatric evaluation to, to rule out any depression, anxiety, delusion. Okay, so how do you prevent the risk? Is to ensure adequate sleep, exercise regularly, uh, stop smoking, stop uh, or decrease alcohol consumption, uh, good control of your chronic disease, lah. Um, continuous lifelong learning to stimulate your brain, play games that promote problem solving, problem solving and calculation can do also do online games nowadays then increase social interaction to elevate mood lah. so this is what to do to help a person who has dementia that you found in the community lah. so you look for signs of the orientation uh, uh, does she appear lost okay so when you approach the person speak softly slowly ask one question at a time be patient when waiting for a response and jog their memory by giving them the names of nearby landmarks. Yeah, they offer to offer help lah, bring them somewhere to sit and rest. You can give them a simple drink, or you can guide them to check if they have some form of identification, or they or if they can recall their home telephone numbers. So, how to assist a person with dementia? Need, if needed, right, you can dial for help, alert security, or call the police at last resort. Yeah, or, or and then continue to chat until they provide to provide assurance like, until help arrive. Yeah, so in Singapore, there is uh, all this uh, AIC Alzheimer's disease where you can find out more information on dementia. And then uh, there's also this dementia GPS tracker where you can buy online. Yeah, uh, this time, yeah, the person will, uh, will have it, then you, you can actually track where the person is, lah, if the person is lost. And then there's an ebook on dementia. You can just uh, actually uh, online search. Um, and then there is uh, dementia friendly committees. So, usually, like uh, committee centers, they have this sticker, we are dementia friendly. So, you actually, if you found some uh, elderly that you think it's lost, or you can actually bring them to these places. Lah. There's some in Yishun, McPherson, Hong Kar North, Bedok, Queenstown, Bukit Batok, Woodlands, Fengshan, and many other communities in Singapore. So last is the living matters, advanced care planning. So now uh, when we are still able to make decisions for ourselves, it's good to uh, do our advanced care planning lah before we before we have dementia sets in us yeah. yeah that's it thank you so hello for going through again with thank us you. okay
for those who have just joined in, just to let you all know that the health talk actually starts at 2 p.m. So uh, I understand that some of you might be out for errands and everything. So if you can do join us at uh, 2 p.m. on every Monday so that you do not miss out our live session. Uh, th th uh, should you actually miss out, right? Uh, like we shared with the rest earlier on, you can actually catch the uh, pre-recorded session at Radhi Facebook where we actually recorded the session and upload into their Facebook page as well. Oh, so it's every Monday same link, is it? Uh, no, it's actually a different link. So, oh, uh, so we will receive from, from Yong Wen now. Uh, yeah, so we have actually different uh, from uh, various uh, uh, community partners with us who join in for this talk. Like, for example, we have Radima's uh, sister. We also have Rock Yong Eun, and I think sometimes NTUC have also do join us as well. So, uh, if you're getting links from different uh, of your many uh, from different person, do continue to get the link from them as well. Or otherwise, if you want, you can actually sign up via our this uh link that I'm going to share. Then you can actually sign up, and our we will actually send you the link on every Friday before the program starts. Mm. Sorry, I thought it's alternate weeks huh? because this week is English, next week is Mandarin, right? Yes, you are right. Yeah. <laughs> That's very good. Actually, do know our schedule pretty well. So if uh we are ongoing on every Monday, however, like you uh like what uh, May has mentioned is that it's actually on a fortnightly where we have the similar language. So let's just say that today is our English language about like our English talk on dementia. So next week on 11 October, it will be actually the Mandarin version. Then if you only want to listen to our English uh, health talk, then the next one will be uh, like she mentioned, it will be the alternate week on 18th of October. Mm, but I see a lot of our residents who join in both bilingual English and Mandarin South Talk I'll see all of them joining in as well so if you're keen to join both then so it's on a weekly basis however if you only have a specific language then it's a fortnightly okay uh, other than that any other questions regarding dementia for uh, our nurses to If there's no further question, uh, hello, hello, may I ask mm. you? Uh, uh, not directly uh, relate to dementia. Uh, dementia uh, it, uh, like, it, is it possible for a person die naturally without any disease? Uh? I know that this is not related to what you are at, at, the, uh, at the talk today. Uh, the person can Possibly. pass away due to old age where the person is healthy but yeah has no history of hypertension or diabetes. Yeah, usually old age. Possible. They sleep in, in the they sleep they die. <laughs> they die in the sleep. Um, I have a question. This dementia cannot be avoided, right? It, it will be definitely whether de it's delayed or uh, but everyone has to come across this stage, is it? So not sooner or later? <laughs> Hello. Dementia, hi. Dementia can be avoided. So can be avoided. Oh. Yeah, there are ways that we can do to prevent dementia, to keep ourselves healthy, positive, our minds oh. keep on uh, stimulating, do all the activities. Yes, but also, but also there are, there, all these are high risk of the possibility of dementia. But sometimes also with with all the things that we have done, for example, keep ourselves healthy, but if things happens if you have a dementia. There are also ways how to delay dementia. Yes. But not all elderly will have dementia. 
No, no. Oh, it can be no, like, like your lifestyle. Like, yes, part. definitely. No. But, but there's some case like um like an elderly always falls and not on the head, you know. That's what happened to my mom. Oh, fall can because be a lot of she factor. On, a few, yeah, a few times when she fell, always her head. Kena. So, this, uh, his, she has iron head, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so, eventually, she, she had the dementia. Mm. But before she passed on, uh, seemed to improve, you no, know, she could recognize all the verse, you know. Yeah, a couple of years ago, just before the COVID, she passed on at the age of 94. Oh, good. She, she was an active person, actually very good, until a few falls and always yeah. turned out the head. Then she, she, her health deteriorated. That's sad to be there because she was very active in those active aging, you know, the uh, every every first Sunday of the month she would join the, you know, the kind of police walking only. She had been very, very good, you know, her lifestyle was good. And she had all the freedom, many friends, but after a few falls, always gonna hit, then she had it. But she, she was, uh, she had um, what they call hypertension and high cholesterol. So part, partly because of this two reasons, yeah. Yeah, phone can be have consider. a lot of factors also. So sometimes mm -hmm. it all depends. Sometimes is it a proper footwear that cause fall? Is it the leg weak? Uh, uh, and then is it because it's unsteady? Whether it's also how you get up from bed? Do, uh, do you feel giddy? Get up from bed also can yeah. can lead to fall. Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. also have to be careful. Is it because the of the Can hazardous? Yeah. Yeah, slight vertigo she had. She was diagnosed a little ah, bit. Ah yes. So uh, you no know, vertigo is like giddy, like pronounced as vertigo or vertigo. Ah. Correct. So for vertigo, especially those get up from bed. So ah, how do how do you ever. know how to get up from bed if you get giddy? So from the bed, you have to sit down first, relax mm. yourself, breathe mm. in, breathe out. And then you feel okay, good. Then you start to stand up. You start to stand up. Mm -hmm. You also don't walk first. See whether uh, you're okay, steady. Then you start to walk. Those high risk of fall, those from, from bed straight away, you get up, straight you walk. So you, you have lost balance. Yeah. So especially at night. Why? Because they uh, have the urge to go to the toilet. So mm -hmm. must be very careful. That's mm -hmm. right. Because she, she, she was a kanchong type. <laughs> uh, yeah, so all these yeah, are kanchong and steady. Right. Uh, they quickly want to go, go toilet yeah. or quickly want to do things fast. Uh. Sometimes they don't realize that uh, all these uh, things that is uh, can cause fall. For example, mm -hmm. for example, they miss a step or miss a curb in the, yeah. uh, at home from the living room to the kitchen. Uh, some, there's, there's, there's a curb or from the stairs from the home to enter the house. Mm. So must be very careful. Yeah, thank you. So I tell myself I must be careful. <laughs> yeah, my cannot control. I must relax. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. So like what uh Mister Nash has shared is there's a lot of reasons for the uh the chronic diseases that you will be that you are actually uh, diagnosed with. So there's no uh, one stone that fix all that. Or if you have all these, that you might end up with this uh, chronic disease. So it might have be different various reasons. And also like uh, what the early on uh, manner has shared that actually uh, fall is something that all seniors should take note of. And that's the reason why we always uh, strongly uh, encourage on the outreach on fall prevention. So in previously when the COVID happened, before the COVID happens, uh, SGH also, also always do the outreach regarding fall prevention to ensure that seniors do not actually uh, learn how to protect themselves on the right uh, proper food and all to prevent fall. So even for all of us listening uh, here today, do try to take note of how do I, can we actually prevent fall. And uh, we actually did had a health talk session regarding fall prevention many, many months back, if anyone who uh, still remembers about it. Perhaps we can actually run mm. through again earlier, uh, maybe next year, if we actually can repeat our sessions again about fall prevention, also to reinforce 
Yeah, yeah hope you because mm-hmm. we miss those. I just got to join this program recently only. So hope to to have that repeated. Uh, that program. Uh, then <coughs> also for the benefit of those newcomers. Thank okay, you. We will definitely discuss and we look at the schedules of the health mm-hmm. talk again. Then we okay. can actually uh, share more on the topic Please. again. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I have a question to ask about uh, for the dementia patient? Uh, they say they don't have people to look after. Is, is there a place of uh, so called like is government uh, going to uh, not say be a place? Uh, <laughs> where are they going to? Uh, uh, is there a daycare center or anything for them to, to, to go if there's no one to look after this patient? What, what are we? What, how are they going to, <laughs> let's say, uh, nobody look after? Who is going to take care of them? Hi. So we have to see a lot of factors whether if they cannot, uh, nobody look after uh, of them, is it in the day? So if it's in the day, they can go to a dementia, uh, day, day, uh, dementia. Okay. Dementia daycare, yes. So, but also the, the limited is that there are not many dementia daycare is uh, available in Singapore. But government is doing something about it. So we are going, uh, to hopefully uh, with m- more dementia daycare, uh, uh, more elderly with dementia can benefit benefit from it. Yes. So, but those who are uh, with family members, uh, but they also have the family members to take care of that at home. And also all the family members are also uh, encouraged to attend training how to cope with family members with dementia. So dementia daycare can also depend, they can go every day or they can go uh, once a week, twice a week, but it all depends on the missed testing and the cost. Yeah, the cost, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, sorry, last question. How long usually dementia patient can survive? <laughs> it all depends. So, okay. so it all depends. There's a lot of things. So different type of dementia and also how other than dementia, what chronic disease they have, whether they have uh, other uh, condition. So it's, uh, it all depends. On whether, whether, are they taking their medication regularly? Are they following up with the doctors? And whether they are emotionally stable, good support from the family members, all this play a part. Oh, there is no you. average, uh, for example, you've got dementia, you live how many years, how many years? No, so it depends and varies. And also, how is our character? Are we a very positive person? Yes, and uh, we will always look forward or the uh, look at the positive thing and looking forward with all the good things that's going to happen to us. I, I really hope, uh, thanks so much. I really hope that one day the scientists can uh, get, I mean, can can uh, invest something uh, that dementia can take some medication can recover. That's what mm. good. Yeah. yeah, hopefully. But hopefully. medication also is one thing, but it's ourselves. How do we keep ourselves now when we are healthy uh, to, so that we don't have dementia? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Christine. That's right. Prevention is always better than cure. <laughs> So something that we all need to learn to actually start cultivating a healthier lifestyle as well. Okay, yes. any last questions for our nurses? So, so um, a positive mindset is important. Positive thinking. Then, you know, make friends like, like this one, you see? <laughs> I, um, I don't know. I find this very helpful. For, thanks for the connection of this, our gym tonic. Uh, the Bishan CC connected us with to, to this uh, Yong En. I am very happy about this. Recently, I've been very involved with this almost every day. You, know? <laughs> you see, uh, one, three, five, then two and four with other, have happy hours, all this. Wow, I'm very occupied, very occupied. <laughs> Besides my own activities, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Actually, that's the power of technology as well. Even though this, when we first started, this health talk is open to Radima CC residents. However, yeah. actually, Radima also currently extend this health talk to different uh, senior activity centers.
lots of different CCs where everyone can actually join in. So even for those who are in Radimas uh, side, you can actually go and find other health talk, other events that are organized by other uh, CC as well, so that you can actually widen up your social network also. So you can make more friends and you can attend more virtual events as well. For now, la, no choice, we can't attend the face-to-face -face one, but at least you yeah. can make those with some virtual events. Hmm. Only one disadvantage uh, is that uh, even Zoom session, uh, all this virtual, we are seated, you see? <laughs> so, must have some break time I move about. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? No? It, there's a, uh, I guess, uh, like, 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 laptop, uh, uh, we seated. So, so, there is a little bit of, um, yeah, only like those workout, uh, workout, then you can move about. Like talking like that, uh, we are seated. <laughs> Especially after lunch. <laughs> but well, she didn't complain with it. Uh, better than none. Uh. <laughs> just True. voice. Just a little, little, you know, kind of opinion. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad that, you know. Yeah. Um, thanks, thanks, SGH, for this kind of talk. Yeah. No problem. We hope you benefit. And also, thank, thank you to Radima CC site as well for having this collaboration with us. So we got a chance to actually share with every one of you here. Yeah. Okay. okay, do not to hold anyone else's time. It's about 95 more minutes to three. So if there's no more questions regarding to this health topic, then uh, we will see those who are joining us for our Mandarin Health Talk next week, 11 October. 2 p.m. Otherwise, uh, we will see you on 18 October for our next health talk topic. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you so much.